Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice problem from Crux Mathematicorum. It's a math journal from Canada full of challenging problems. Great, so we have this equation, and I might have done this problem a while ago. I can't remember exactly if I did. I apologize. Hopefully, uh, you'll learn something new even in that case. We have x to the fourth power plus one divided by the quantity x plus one to the fourth power equals one half and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the methods may be incomplete for certain reasons. Anyways, I'll tell you about, more about it. So, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, when I first saw this equation, I kind of thought about it like, maybe we can divide the numerator and the denominator by something, like maybe multiplying this by one over x squared or dividing by x squared would make sense because if you divide this by x squared, you would get x squared plus one over x squared, which is something that we could use or we use a lot with polynomials, such as x plus one over x. So if you think about a polynomial of x plus one over x, then this would probably make more sense. What about the denominator? Well, if you're dividing by x squared, you kind of need to do the same thing at the bottom, but dividing by x squared Actually, inside the radical or inside the power, inside the parentheses means you're dividing by square root of x, and that should give you square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. So that should probably give you something meaningful because these two are related. You can square this and then get x plus 1 over x, so on and so forth. But there's going to be some twos involved. I don't think it's going to uh, turn out to be a nice thing, but you can test it out. Anyways, that's not what I'm going to talk about uh, generally. I want to talk about something else. So let's go ahead and uh, cross multiply these two things. 2x to the 4th plus 2 equals, if you expand x plus 1 to the 4th, remember Pascal's triangle, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, the 4th row, x to the 4th, or the, the binomial theorem in general. You get the following. And then let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. I can go ahead and subtract x to the 4th, and then everything else will be coming in, right, with a minus sign. And then finally, 2 minus 1 is just going to be a positive 1, and we'll get the following expression. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, what can I do with this? Now, there's a couple different alternatives. Uh, one of them is maybe using the rational root theorem, which is not going to be very helpful, because the only divisors of 1, or factors of 1, are 1 and negative 1, but they are not solutions. Or are they? I don't think so, because we have a lot of minus uh, coefficients or negative coefficients in the middle. It's not going to work. Negative one is not going to work either, so we can't use RRT because there are no rational solutions, which you will notice uh, when we get the solutions, hopefully. Okay, what else can we do? Maybe we can do factoring. Hmm. This kind of looks like the x minus 1 to the fourth power with some differences, right? Maybe I can do that. Okay, let's give it a try. Actually, that wasn't what I was going to talk about, but I still want to introduce, maybe introduce a bunch of different alternatives within the first method, kind of like the under the same umbrella, and then do something else for the second, which is what I'm trying to get at. So here's what we could possibly do. I'm thinking, okay, if I expand this, uh, I get x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4x plus 1. So it's very similar to this. So that's my motivation. The only thing that needs to be fixed is this one. Make sense? Okay. And we can easily fix it. How? We can go ahead and since we, we do need minus 6x squared instead of positive 6x squared, we can subtract 12x squared from both sides. Make sense? In other words, if you subtract, uh, oops, I forgot to subtract. <laughs> okay. If you subtract 12x squared from this, it will be x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, 6x squared minus 12x squared is minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 1. And yes, that's our expression, so we're going to set it equal to 0. So if I can solve this equation, then I'll be done, right? That's what I need to set equal to 0. Great, this equation can be solved because it is a difference of two squares. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, great. That's going to be part of the first method because I also need to show you something else. Okay. So what should we do? We have two options, and I like the second one. 
First option is difference of two squares. Use the formula. Remember, a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. Or the second approach is basically put this on the right hand side and set both sides equal to each other. And by taking square roots, you're going to get two solutions. So we're going to go ahead and take square roots. But remember, square roots will bring absolute values. So we're going to get x minus 1 uh, squared from here. And then the other side is going to be the uh, 2 root 3x with a plus minus sign. Because there are two numbers whose square is 12x squared. And these are those numbers. Okay. So from here, what are we getting? Two quadratic equations. And that's very nice, isn't it? So first one is this one. And then the other one is going to be this one. Let's go ahead and solve each one separately and see what we get. Obviously, you need to kind of expand it, right? And then put everything on the same side, bring it over. So it's going to be like 2 plus 2 root 3 as the coefficient of x with the minus sign, of course, plus 1 equals 0. And if you use the quadratic formula, you should get the following. Negative b, which is 2 plus 2 root 3, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 2 plus 2 root 3 squared. And then... By the way, b is negative, but its square is the same. Minus 4ac, that's just going to be a 4. Good. Divide that by 2a, which is 2. Okay, let's go on and expand this. 2 plus 2 root 3 squared. That would be 4 plus, uh-oh. Notability going crazy again with this static electricity or whatever that is. I don't know. I probably have a lot of static electricity, you know. <laughs> Anyways. So let's go ahead and... Expand this. Uh, let's find out delta first. It's going to be 4 plus 8 root 3 plus 12, 2 root 3 squared. And then that'll be 16 plus 8 root 3. And of course, from that, I need to subtract 4, which is going to give me 12 plus 8 root 3. So x values are going to be from here, 2 plus 2 root 3 plus minus the square root of 16 minus 4, which is a 12, 12 plus 8 root 3. Okay? And all of that is divided by 2. So we get two solutions from here because it's quadratic. But if you do the exact same thing with the other equation, you should be getting two more solutions, which are easy to find. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you because those are easy. But I'm going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. Another approach that I wanted to talk about would be the quartic formula. Obviously, you can go ahead and take this equation, right? It's kind of like the... Uh, maybe 1b, okay? You can go ahead and replace x with y plus 1. That's the formula that will get rid of the cubic term. And then you're going to get an equation like this. I think something like y to the fourth minus 12y squared minus 24y minus 12. This kind of looks factorable, but it's not. And if you go ahead and solve it, how would you solve it? You would put uh, y to the fourth on one side and everything else on the other side and then add something to both sides so you can make the left hand side a perfect square which makes the right hand side a perfect square which makes the discriminant zero makes sense that's all idea i tried it but uh let me tell you what i'm adding to both sides you can add 2ky squared plus k squared and obviously this is going to become y squared plus k quantity squared and the right hand side also needs to be that and but i didn't get something nice from here i'm going to leave it and if you find something nice, please leave in the comment section down below. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is pretty interesting. And these kinds of equations or polynomials actually have a special name. Let's talk about it and then we'll get to the solution. And we'll get the same uh, solutions, right? We should. Okay, these polynomials, because if you replace x with 1 over x, you, you'll actually get the same thing, which means if x is a solution, 1 over x is also a solution. These polynomials are, are called self-reciprocal, self-reciprocal, because reciprocal polynomial is another concept, but self-reciprocal means when you take the reciprocal, it's the same thing, or they're also called palindromic polynomial. Remember, palindrome means it's the same um, forward and backward. Anyway, so let's see how we can solve self-reciprocal uh, polynomials or polynomial equations. Okay, that's such a long term, but that's what it is. And the reason behind that is the coefficient of x to the fourth and the constant term, they have the same coefficient. These two have the same coefficient, and of course there's something in the middle, which is kind of like a reflective, right? Or re you can basically take a reflection. So here's what we're gonna do. 
we're going to go ahead and divide everything by the middle power of x, which is x squared. That's going to give us x squared minus 4x minus 6 minus 4 over x plus 1 over x squared equals 0. And then from here, we're going to put these two together, x squared plus 1 over x squared. And then we're going to put the x plus 1 over x together with a minus 4 and a minus 6 equals 0. And by way of substitution, if you go ahead and call this u or t, whatever, this will be u squared minus 2. As you know, u squared minus 2 minus 4u minus 6 equals 0. So this is, pro this is a problem for you if it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. And from here, we get two solutions for you. For example, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 16, minus 4ac. That's going to be a 32. 48. 48 is going to be 4 root 3. And if you divide by 2, you're going to get 2 plus 2 root plus minus 2 root 3. Again, that name, number came up before, remember? And then you're going to just set this equal to uh, x plus 1 over x because that's what u is, u r, u is, whatever. And then from here, you're going to be able to solve for x. But guess what? It's just going to give you the exact same solutions. Okay? A really nice problem from Crux Mathematicorum. Thank you, Canada, for a beautiful problem like this. But take a look at this. There are only two real solutions. Thank you, uh, Wolfram Alpha, for this uh, nice uh, graph. Uh, one thing that I like about the Wolfram Alpha graphs is that uh, they're scaled differently so that we can fit the graph on one screen, right? And here's the real solutions for this equation, and here's the complex solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.